the race, uh, obviously, it's been a tumultuous two weeks um, with the, the tape coming out last Friday, the weekend, the debate, and then just this chaotic week that's, that's ensued. Um, and then we have swing state polls that are really sort of hard to follow. Yeah. It's hard to pick up a trend because there's some states, like I think, you know, we showed Ohio, uh, Trump ahead, North Carolina, it's, it's basically margin of error. Uh, and others where Hillary Clinton seems to be moving in front. It's hard to believe it was only one week ago today that Access Hollywood tape come out. So much has happened since then. Let's see what the impact's been. Key battleground states, Donald Trump has a slight edge in the state of Ohio, according to the NBC Wall Street Journal Marist poll, 42% to Hillary Clinton's 41%, that obviously within the margin of error. Gary Johnson at nine, Jill Stein, at four in Ohio. The NBC Wall Street Journal Marist poll out of North Carolina has Clinton up there, 45% to Trump's 41%. Johnson again taking up nine percentage points there. A Suffolk poll shows a closer race in North Carolina. Clinton 45, Trump 43, Johnson at five. Let's go up to New Hampshire, a UMass Lowell 7 News poll gives Hillary Clinton a six point lead there, 45 to 39, Johnson again at 9%. And out west, a poll taken for the Republican Senate Leadership Fund in Nevada hands Clinton the advantage there, 45% to Trump's 39, 10 points there in Nevada for Johnson. In Utah, different candidates stirring up the race. The Monmouth University poll gives Donald Trump a six-point edge over Hillary Clinton, 34 to 28, with independent Evan McMullen climbing to 20%, Gary Johnson at 9. So, uh, Caddy, you look at the two swing states, uh, the main swing states, Ohio and North Carolina, mm -hmm. surprising Donald Trump is ahead, even though it's margin of error after the past week or so. North Carolina, the two polls basically look like it's margin of error as well. So still tight there, but it does look like New Hampshire is starting to slip away, uh, slip out of Trump's column. Uh, Nevada, six points also as well. And yes, Donald Trump's up in Utah, but obviously... Yeah. <laughs> Republicans, yeah, Republicans haven't lost Utah since 1964. So what do you what do you see in all the in well, all the numbers? And when you dig down into some of these polls a bit further, what you see is the trend over the last week has been particularly college-educated white women moving dramatically away from the Democratic column. I mean, into the Democratic into the column, Demo away from, from the Republican, Republican column. And I, I and the double impact of that videotape and then the second debate and everything that we've seen over the last couple of days, although I suspect that's not quite in those polls right yet, Willie. Mm -hmm. But that clearly is starting to have an impact. We've seen it in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. You're seeing it there in New Hampshire as well. And, it, and, it's, mm -hmm. and it's that group of people. Ohio is interesting. I spent a couple of days in Ohio last week um, talking to steel workers who obviously are having a very rough time, a guy who had been a Democrat his whole life who has just registered Republican to vote for Trump. Yeah. because he's doing it to save his job. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if Trump manages to hang on to Ohio. There's quite a lot of those pockets of communities in Ohio. Globalization's left them behind. Right. They feel they've had a bad deal. They don't trust her on trade. It's pretty remarkable. And, and it's a state be I think he can still win. Because, you know, we talk about Kennedy. I mean, Ohio has been mm -hmm. such a toss-up state for so long. Since yeah, 19, hadn't it been? Since yeah. 1960. I know. Yeah, it's just, it's it, just it, that place. It, it's, it, but... but Mitt Romney never really had a shot there. I mean, Barack mm -hmm. Obama, it was close, mm -hmm. but he was always three, four points ahead. Mm -hmm. It was solid. Yeah. And I remember Republicans talking about Ohio, but you could just tell it was solidly in Barack Obama's column. There's just well, Mitt still Romney, that level of enthusiasm about Obama that there isn't about Clinton, right? Yeah. Well, but, uh, Mitt and, Romney is not a working class hero, and, and, right? Exactly. I, I mean, that's, that's, I think that maybe is, that's the kind of Republican right. who... Who can who can get some purchase in in Ohio? I, I think. And by though, the way, doesn't that tell Republicans yeah. where they need to go four years from now? Right. N not with all of the, the 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 parts of of Trump that obviously mm -hmm. are offensive to college-educated yeah. people, mm -hmm. but somebody not a Mitt Romney, right. not a John McCain, not a creature of Washington, but somebody that can relate to steel workers. Well, like. Well, Ronald Reagan did. Well, exactly. That's you look. Speak to those people. You right. do better. Start right. Start there. <laughs> speak to those people. Start You'll there. You'll do better. Your billionaires on Wall and Street by, will come along. Ex right. And and by the way, take a look at your array of, of policies and and see if there are any that 
those people view as help. like really hostile to their interests, yeah. and and you might want to want to change those. I mean, if you look at the whole array of the of the polls we've been seeing this week, um, it, it, to me, what you see is that he, Donald Trump had to run the table. He's got to run right. the table yeah. in these swing states, and that looks like a a just receding dream day by day by day by day because in some states you know in states where he was a little bit be, he was a little bit ahead now she's a little bit ahead and in states where she was a little bit ahead she's a lot ahead and it's it's right. um, uh, th that door is closing and, and to Caddy's point about college educated women it's it's one thing to win over those white working class men in Ohio the steel workers that you talk to but if you look at numbers coming out of suburbs we had one yesterday that we talked about a couple times out of the Philadelphia suburbs Mm -hmm. where he is just getting destroyed yeah, by yeah. Hillary Clinton. So if that's also true in Columbus and Cincinnati well, exactly, and Cleveland yeah. suburbs, mm -hmm. that's where he's in trouble. What we have to remember is, again, trend lines. If you had taken a poll on Sunday before the Monday debate, Donald Trump was 14 points down. After the Monday debate, he was seven points down. The question is, what happens? What do we have? Two weeks now? A little less than two weeks? Three, three, three and two. Oh, three. God! I'm sorry. <laughs> God! When's it going to end? No, it's just. Oh, jeez! I thought we were two. Did weeks. you see that no. thing from the American Institute of Psychiatry oh. yesterday saying that Americans are getting stressed by this election? Oh, I believe. It. I sympathize. We have three you think? weeks. <laughs> okay. Well, then, then I guess that just really makes what I was going to say all the more yeah. relevant. We have a long way to go. Three and a half weeks. No, we do we have, have a long way to go. We have three and a half because you know, he went from 14 happen. on Sunday down to 7 on right. on Monday or Tuesday down. And so all of these polls are going to ebb and flow. The only thing I would say is if I were a Hillary Clinton supporter is, how's Donald Trump still ahead in Ohio? Right. Yeah. Again, what's going to happen? How do we keep the trend lines right. going? Well, exactly. Obviously, the trend lines look very good for her right now, but Harold Wilson, yeah. a week a week is a lifetime in yeah. politics. Well. And and her strategy at the moment seems to be keep a fairly low profile. She hasn't got any public events scheduled until next until the debate next Wednesday. It's pretty smart, right? She's out doing mm -hmm. do fundraising. No do no harm. She's got a couple of television appearances speaking to bespoke audiences. Mm -hmm. She's not great anyway in those big rallies, so in a sense, why do them? But, you know, do no harm, keep your head down, and, and let the chaos that is happening in the Trump campaign play out and carry on drip dripping his numbers down. Well, I, I, the one caution that and Harold Ford brought this up the other day as a big Hillary Clinton supporter is don't take your foot off the gas because this the, Donald Trump still could I mean it's a, he's got to right. win, pull some straights here on the inside but he still could win the election but so you, the, the you four keep, corners offense can be dangerous no don't go where you hold corners. the ball you know right. you, you have to keep advancing by the same token if Trump is going to come out day after day after day speak only to his base alienate others um, then you don't want to get you know, in the way of that message, right. you, you want to keep moving yeah, forward. And, and but you know, you, but she's recording shows with Ellen. That might be more effective, actually, to female audiences than right. doing another big rally in New Hampshire is for yeah. her, which she's not particularly good at anyway. So she, I don't think she's taking her foot off the gas. It's a question of targeting the way she is most effectively used. And you don't have to do those. Right. Big and things. the question is, um, <clears throat> what impact is Donald Trump having on voters right now with an approach that is, as people say, peak Trump, which he's trashing the media, he's trashing his own Republican Party, he's trashing the Washington mm -hmm. uh, ruling class, he's, he's trashing uh, financiers in, in rhetoric that uh, I think some have suggested mm -hmm. is anti-Semitic. He's going, um, he's, he's Again, he's going all mm -hmm. in here, and I would not expect anybody around this table mm -hmm. or with anybody that we know or anybody in Washington, D.C. that's in sort of an influencer to think any of that was going to win him, win him an election. Uh, but, <laughs> Caddy Kay, tell us what all your friends were saying two days before Brexit. And I'm not saying, I'm not drawing too many parallels I just would be surprised if there aren't a, if there isn't a two or three percent uh, gap between the polling numbers and how people are going to actually vote just 
make it happen. Some, some say that didn't happen in Brexit. I can tell you, everybody said that, that Brexit was going to fail. You All know, the elites. Have you seen Sterling at the moment? You know how to hurt, Joe. This is a painful topic, the yes. impact of Brexit. Yeah, right. So I went to bed on the night of the 23rd of June um, absolutely convinced that we were going to vote to stay in the European Union because everybody in the establishment believed. And everybody ev you knew. And everybody I knew. Everybody and, you and respected. And the Leave campaigners who I had interviewed that day didn't think they were going to win. The Leave camp didn't think they were going to win and were saying so quite publicly. They virtually gave a concession speech that night. That's how convinced they were. Sterling had rallied, the markets had rallied, all the indications were. So, so things can, polls can get it wrong, and if there is this secret Trump vote out there that's not being picked up, and the only indication it seems to me we have of that is the disparity between what people will tell online polls right. and telephone polls, and it does seem that he gets higher margins in online polls. Uh, because somehow in the anonymity of just pressing a button, people are prepared to admit that they're going to vote for Trump, yeah, yeah. whereas they don't want to tell it to somebody down the telephone. So that, if that plays oh. out, then maybe these polls are wrong, the which, is what the, which is what Kellyanne Conway has you know, repeatedly said. Yeah. And these, we, these we polls, don't know. But they'd have to be we very don't know. wrong I mean, they have, point, Well, they but here's there's been a lot, been a right, lot of searching right for the shy Trump right. voters. Yeah. Right, right now, though, though Gene, we're at uh, basically a seven-point spread, and we're going to yeah. show a new mm -hmm. Fox poll. Yeah. If there's a seven-point spread, yeah. there's not That's an eight-point. No, yeah. If in the yeah. final three weeks, I can't believe we have three weeks. Oh. Yeah. If in the final three weeks, let's say it gets whittled down to two or three percent, yeah. and Hillary Clinton's up okay. by two or three percent, at that point... Well, also, that would suggest there's a swing in his direction right. anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, no, at that point, it, it may be right, a, exactly. a cause if for, it, if, for it narrow, if it were to narrow to two or three points, right. then there's no way that the, the Clinton forces would, would go to bed on election, you know, the yeah. night before the election thinking they have anything in the back. If you watch, no way. you watch his speech yesterday, this is the final scene in The Wild Bunch where he's just... <laughs> You know, he's, he's he, he goes after everybody. He says now he tells his followers and his audience it's a conspiracy. There is it's a, a outright conspiracy. Globalist us. conspiracy. Globalist conspiracy. Right. He not only did he attack all the people you described there. He attacked in specific ways the accusers from the New York Times and People Magazine. Said they were horrible people and they're liars. I mean, he is going all in on being the old Trump. It's Trump against the world. It's Trump against the world. Let's look at.